Okay, I want to give you an introduction to PHP. What is server-side programming? What is PHP and how does it all work? Well, PHP uh, originally stood for Personal Homepage. It was a free open source project back in the late 90s for people who wanted to start up a web server, build a dynamic website, and not have to pay any money. Uh, MySQL was a free database that got packaged with that. And uh, you had products like MAMP and WAMP and LAMP and ZAMP that got created. Uh, MAMP stands for Mac, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So Mac, obviously the operating system. Apache is the web server. That's the program that sends files to your browser. So if I type in an address here, this request is being sent off to a computer. That is at this address, www.mamp.info and the program that receives the request and sends something back to me, that is Apache. That is the web server. That's the program. MySQL, this is a database program for saving data, and PHP is the other part of this. Uh, this is often referred to as the LAMP stack, uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, and that was because you had Linux or Unix systems that were the operating system on the computer that was hosting Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So a lot of free open source uh, websites were created and this is sort of what spurred the huge growth in the web in the early days was the fact that you could do all of this for free. Uh, MySQL is free, PHP is free, Apache was free, and then Linux, LAMP, the LAMP stack, Linux was the free operating system. Now we've got uh, Apache MySQL PHP running on Mac, running on Windows. You can see right here, it's available for Windows as well. It's also available on Linux. It's just this bundle of all these tools together. Um, they Actually, they changed the name to My Apache MySQL PHP. Orig originally, it was for Mac. Okay, so you have this bundle that you can download and install for free on your computer, whatever it is. And once you have that, then you need to start the program. So this is what it looks like once you've got it up and running. You'd have a button here that said Start Servers. You click on that button, you get two little green lights up here. Okay, Apache is running, MySQL is running, and PHP is a program that's sitting there ready to run as well. When you create web pages, so here I have a simple HTML file with a little bit of style, uh, some HTML. I've given it the file extension .php. The reason I do that is if I save a file on the server with the file extension .php, then when Apache receives a request for the file with the .php file extension, it says, well, I know I've got the file, but I'm not sure what to do with it. So I'm going to pass the file over to the PHP program. The PHP program is going to read through the page looking for any PHP script that is inside of it. PHP reads the script, it runs the script, generates a brand new HTML file, which then gets passed back to Apache, and then Apache sends that to your browser. So here is the page right here, intro.php. This page is being returned here. It looks just like an HTML file. Really, that's all it is. I don't have any PHP code in this page right now, but the PHP interpreter did look to see if there was any inside of here. So I have MAMP running, and the reason that I have to have it running is I've got to have Apache running so that the PHP is there, so that Apache can pass it over to PHP and ren render anything that's written with the PHP script. So how do I add PHP script? Well, anywhere inside your HTML file, anywhere at all, even above the doc type, you can come in here and say, all right, I'm going to create a block of PHP code. There it is. This is a block of PHP code. I don't, it's not doing anything right now, but I could, if I wanted, let's say echo nav, and I'm going to put an anchor tag inside of here pointing to nowhere in particular. Close my anchor tag, close my nav, and semicolon at the end. So echo is the command to write something out. Remember I said that 
PHP was going to generate a new file? Well, it'll take all this HTML, and anywhere that I'm saying echo, or you can also use print as well, but anywhere I'm saying echo, this will write out brand new source code for the HTML, which the browser will then render. So I'll come over here and I'll hit refresh. And there it is. This is my nav tag with the anchor inside of it. If I right click and inspect this, there we are. So here's my header with the h1 tag inside of it. Here's the nav with the anchor tag inside of it. And there's the main with the paragraph inside of it. So all this content has been rendered here. That's what PHP does. Now, doing this just to write out a piece of HTML, that's just a lot of extra work that you don't really need to do. So I would never just use PHP to write out a piece of pointless uh, content like that. We don't want to write our HTML inside of here. But PHP does let us make our pages more dynamic. And that means I can look at what's the current time or did the user send me some data from a form? Did the user have something in the query string? Well, these are variables. These are things that can change. Based on that information, I can render completely different content. So here, let's do, let's do a little simple example. I'm going to look at the current time. I'm going to tell PHP on the server, let's get the current timestamp, look at the number of seconds right now, and if I'm, say, from 0 to 29 seconds, I'm going to style this paragraph in one way, and if I'm 30 to 59 seconds, if that's the current timestamp, then I'm going to style it in a different way. So I will, inside of here, create a variable called seconds. And this is the way PHP does all variables. Anything that starts with a dollar sign, that is a variable in PHP. I'm going to use a built-in method called date. What date does is it gets the current timestamp, and then I can format it. So I can come in here and say lowercase s. That will give me the current seconds out of the current timestamp. But you can specify in here as a second parameter the any timestamp that you want. But if you don't, then by default it'll just say right now. Here's the current time, and I want to extract the seconds portion of that. Now this is going to give me back a string. I want to use a number because I'm going to look at the actual number. There's a built-in function called int val which will give me the integer value of that string. So I'm going to get the current seconds, turn that into a number, and put it into my variable. Now I'm going to do an if statement. Same as if you were writing uh, JavaScript or other languages, we've got basic if statements, and you can make it an if-else statement. So if this condition is true, I'm going to do this piece of code, else this piece of code. Well, I'm going to look at seconds, and I say if seconds is less than 30, then I'm in the first half of the minute, else I'm in the second half of the minute. I'm going to create a brand new variable here called class, and that's going to be called early, or class is going to be called late. So these are just arbitrary names that I've come up with because I have these in my CSS. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. Now I've gotten rid of the nav part. Inside of the paragraph, if I set the class early, so this is something you've done with HTML, I'm sure. <coughs> Pardon me. This is what it does. The class early turns the background orange. If I use the class late, makes it almost white on a blue background. Okay. Now, I have these variables in PHP. They're inside my PHP block, so I know that this is being run as PHP script. When I refreshed the page, I didn't get any errors, so I know that's working. Now, I want to put this variable class inside of here. So, I could do this. I can say PHP echo class semicolon to end my line. There we go. Now I can refresh that, so I know I'm at the 30 seconds, but it's, it's hard to know when I'm at the 30, when I'm at, when I'm more than 30, less than 30. So I'm also going to write out the value of seconds. 
There we go. Forgot the question mark here. So I thought it was a paragraph tag. There we go. So I have one PHP block here, and then I've got another PHP block right here. If I refresh this, there we go. There's the number, 11. If I refresh it again, 15. So you're starting to see, I'm on the same page, intro.php, but the content of my page is changing depending on the value of some variable. I'm able to use that with PHP to change the content. Now, it's going to be over 30 seconds next time I refresh. This should come up as blue. And it does. And that's because we're changing the value here. If I inspect this, there it is. The class is late. If I refresh it again, it's still blue. 47, 50, 52. Keep watching that number. 54, 56, 58. And here we go. There, now it's orange. Zero is the number, and the class changed to early. Now, that works great. I've dynamically changed the background color here. I could do this to the entire page. I could have put the class name on the body instead of just on this paragraph. I could change the look and feel of my page. I can change background images. I can change anything I want. I'm dynamically building an HTML file based on the value of variables in my PHP script. Now, one last thing I want to show you here. This is the standard PHP block, but if all you really want to do is echo out a variable, that's a lot of extra typing. There is a shortcut for this. We can get rid of the semicolon. We can get rid of the word echo. We can get rid of the PHP and just put an equal sign there. Do the same thing here. Get rid of the PHP and the echo. Replace that with an equal sign and we can get rid of the semicolon. Save that and it does the exact same thing. So there's the number coming up and the class early is being added and it will eventually get to the 30. I don't want to wait for that to happen. So hopefully that gives you enough to get started with PHP. I've got some other videos in this playlist for how to work with strings, how to work with uh, get values and post values. That's how to send data from the browser off to the server and process that. There we go, there's the blue. So, any questions, please leave them in the comments, and keep watching the rest of the videos in this playlist. And, uh, as always, thanks for watching.